This episode starts with rain hammering down in the streets. A woman dressed in a thin veil evades a rabble of guards as she walks through town. Slipping down the back alleys, she makes her way to a poor family. Only, there is a problem, a strange devilish man arrives with blue-gray skin and charges at them. Thankfully, a demon slayer called Jang Gang appears and throws it across the room. Somehow conjuring up water powers, he confines it to a prison. It turns out this creature is the woman's son who has lost control. She pleads with Jang Gang to bring him back but it's no good, he's too far gone. Jang eventually plunges this wild soul into the watery depths below. It turns to rock after losing its power. Jang is summoned to the royal palace where the king bemoans his luck at being ill. However, Jang is working on a new spell that allows one's soul to be transported into another. The king is aware of this and wants to transport inside Jang's soul and have them switch places just for seven days. Jang is wary, pointing out that it's forbidden magic, but the will of the king is hard to fight against. Begrudgingly, he agrees to do this. He enacts the magic and they switch places. However, the king's target here is Du Hua, Jang's beloved. He intends to have her bear a child and hurries off to make love with her, unbeknownst to the poor woman that the real Jang Gang is stuck in the wrong body. Skip forward 20 years and the child conceived has grown into Jang UK, who happens to be at the royal palace overseen by Park Jin. That's not our target though, this happens to be the formidable Nak Su. She's a shadow assassin and uses her watery powers to stave off numerous royal soldiers who try to capture her. There is a really slick use of CGI here, fighting across this frozen lake. Despite taking an arrow through the chest and bleeding out, Nak Su makes it into the nearby town and remains determined to stay alive no matter what. Nak Su approaches a woman in the back of a bar and brings forth a strange orb. As smoke protrudes out from the roof, Nak Su is found dead on the ground by the soldiers, who catch up to her. As we later find out, it's actually been transferred into a blind girl called Mu Diok, who's currently receiving safe passage out of the area to another part of town. Only, she doesn't seem to be blind but Nak Su has also lost her powers as well. While Nak Su's body is brought to the royal temple, where the royals examine the blue mark and wonder where her soul is, Nak Su gets accustomed to becoming Mu Diok. Those in the palace, though, worry that the soul shifters have returned. We return for now to Jang Gang's son, Jang UK, who is currently off training high up in the mountains. He's tasked with staying there for three years, although UK isn't one to follow the rules. His current teacher, an elder monk, is angry at his attitude and refuses to teach him. UK is undeterred and defiantly claims he's going to find someone else to teach him instead. Mu Diok starts to understand the world she's tumbled into as she finds herself outside the brothel, intending to scout out the monks she's been sent there to kill. These happen to be known as the Four Seasons of Daeho. There is the daughter of Jin family, Jin Cho Yeon, the heir of the Park family, Park Dang-gu, genius of the Seo family, Seo Yol, and Jang Yu-k, the successor of the Jang family. The latter is, of course, whom she's going to collide with in this story. Mu Diok's motivation for learning who this lot are stems from the simplest of emotions revenge. After witnessing her kin killed when she was a child, she's intending to get her vengeance. Only, there is a problem. Mu Diok is spotted wandering through the royal palace and being able to see, no less. It's UK who spots her while she's trying to escape from her maid. The pair wind up together, with Mu Diok threatening him with a crab leg. UK doesn't take it seriously and points out how beautiful Mu Diok's eyes are. She's caught completely off guard. When Mu Diok leaves, UK deliberates over the girl's fighting style, realizing it's very similar to that of Nak Su, the assassin the royal palace are obviously after. 